Oh, Han Solo shot him. <sighs> I knew it. I called it too. Yongun is pointing a gun at Vincenzo. I knew it. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew Yongun was going to backstab Vincenzo. I didn't know when. I didn't know how. And I didn't expect it was going to be this episode. But I knew it. The moment we saw Yongun being angry at one point in, the, in a previous episode where Vincenzo was putting all of his time trying to fight the evil company and not putting his time into the main reason why he's in South Korea in the first place to get the gold, I knew he was going to backstab him. Now, there's a possibility that he was going to backstab him at the very, very beginning, but it doesn't matter if it's at that point of the episode where he got angry or way, way before everything else. I knew he was going to backstab him. That's crazy. And this episode really shows that um, it's so much more than just having a guy trying to find the gold or trying to secure the gold because everyone else knows that there's gold in there now. Um, it's so much more than just having a guy fight an evil company. It's pretty much a full circle and the situation is getting even much worse because now it's connecting to Vincenzo's group circle, I should say. You know what I mean? Because now... Like, Vincenzo has his own group, you know, with the whole mafia thing and uh, Wang Shaolin and the gold. And you would think it would it would be separate from his time with the Tenons and Babil. But no. It's like two different circles creating one big circle. Well, that's a heart, but still. You know what I mean? There was some good funny stuff in this episode. Like, um, Ju Song being left out in the dark. Like, he is the last person that knew that there was gold in the building. He was also left out the fact that Kisok is a double agent. <laughs> it was so hilarious. Like, um, the way he, he reacted to, oh, okay, so I guess I was the only person that didn't know about the gold. Everything, everything that I went through, the dirty stuff I had to do, the dangerous stuff I had to do, you left me out. I thought we were family. And then when he found out that Kisok was a double agent, Ah, <sighs> left out in the dark again. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for the guy, but that was so hilarious. Um, also, seeing Jusong, uh, Chaeyoung, and Vincenzo eat chocolate golden bars. That was pretty hilarious. Oh, and, and, and also, another funny part is just seeing the battle for the gold is being developed within Gumga Plaza right now. Because now everyone knows, and I mean everyone knows, which is pretty hilarious. And I can't wait to see their head-on fight you know what i mean because that's gonna be one one funny funny fight now with all the funny stuff there was some good serious stuff too like myungi killing the union leader with a truck what's with babil no 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 not the company what's with myungi with killing victims with a truck she has some way to uh leave a mark i should say but anyway um uh, Vincenzo outsmarting Junu. He was doing that pretty much the first half of the episode. Um, Hanso shooting Junu. I know his real name is Hansok, but because I'm so used to calling him Junu, like, you know, I'll get used to it. But for now, it's just Junu. Um, yeah, Hanso shooting Junu. Junu gets up, tells Hanso, hey, you should have aimed properly, falls down, and then lives. I'm like, well, it happened. We knew that he was going to shoot him anyway, but I kind of thought it was going to be like maybe three episodes after. But still, it's like, wow. Um, Yeah, you got the guillotine file. You got Yonggun uh, pointing a gun at Vincenzo after they got to the safe and the gold is right in front of him. It was crazy. So at the beginning of the episode, we're in Junu's place. Vincenzo is holding a gun towards Junu's face and Junu is like, hey, shoot me. Go ahead. And then here comes in Prosecutor Jong. And Jong, well, first off, I didn't know at that point how did he kn how did he know that Vincenzo was there in the first place? Come to find out, it was his plan, Vincenzo's plan. So since uh Prosecutor Jong came in, he said, Whoa, 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 don't shoot, don't shoot. Junu was pretty much playing it off and acting like a victim, you know, fake crying and whatnot. And Vincenzo, yeah, he wants to shoot him. But what we didn't know that he was holding a fake gun and this whole thing was a plan. So the plan was to have Prosecutor Jong and his men follow him. And that's how he knew. And the fact that he wasn't going to kill Juno anyway, he used a fake gun. 
And his plans changed too. Because what Vincenzo said was, yeah, he was going to shoot him. Well, I mean, he was going to kill him, but his plans changed. But because um, his, his Italian mafia rules, hold up, I wrote it down here somewhere. So the first rule was, um, give what your enemy fears most. And the second rule is, take away what they value the most. What does Junu value the most other than Chayon? Well, the company, yeah, makes sense. And fear? What does Junu fear anyway? I don't know. Well, um, oh, his identity? Fearing? No, wait, I wouldn't call that a fear, though. Because, is it a fear to show your true identity? I mean, he did it anyway with confidence. It's not like he was scared to begin with in the first place. And then after that, Vincenzo met up with Gilbert. Not Gilbert, Gilbert. <laughs> but anyway, he met up with him. He found out that the homeless guy was the one that told the tenants about the gold and he asked him how did you know about the gold he had a phone with a picture of one of the workers that died that day in hiding the gold so vincenzo decided how about you leave the neighborhood and live somewhere else and gilbert was like no i i like this i like this place this is my home i'm going to live as a homeless guy here and then vincenzo slipped in an envelope for money and was like yo at first, he was angry. He was like, no, 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 no. There's no way you're going to pay me to leave. And then he gives him more money. And then it's like, yo, I'm not leaving. I am devoted to Gumga Plaza. I am devoted to this neighborhood. Okay? There's no way you can... Who are you again? <laughs> and then, yeah, he just played it off. Like, um, who are you? What's his phone? I don't know. What gold? Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, he's out. But I don't think that's the last time we're going to see him, though. And then back at the plaza, Vincenzo pretty much told the tenants everything he said was, was a lie. Pretty much a lie. But we know that Midi thought that, yo, your, your answer is bullshit. It's BS, man. <laughs> it's BS. And we already know that the tenants thought that his reasoning was BS, too. So for the tenants, they actually went to Sokto. And Sokdo knows a guy who actually is an expertise in finding gold. So, yeah, I can't wait to see this battle between everyone in the plaza just to find the gold. And then I know I'm skipping around, but I'm just staying towards the same t uh, topic. So, staying on the same topic of the tenants and the gold, towards the end, Vincenzo, Chayong, and Jusong told the tenants that they were going to take them to a spa trip, which they did so Vincenzo and Jusong can have the plaza to themselves. And then they head to the temple. Got to the safe, they opened it, they went down, they saw all the gold, and that's where we saw um, Yonggun pointing a gun at Vincenzo. And again, I called it. Now with everything around Junu, like, it was going crazy. So Junu had to lay low for a bit. And he, yeah, he decided to go to his uh, dad's vacation home. What's funny, while he was there, he was watching, I think it was a commercial or a drama scene where it was two guys that were going to kill each other. And it turns out it was Nick Kun and Chan Song, his 2PM brothers. And I'm like, oh, snap. Yo, I did not expect them to see. Well, I did not expect to see them in this drama, but I think it was so cool. Hey, uh, 2PM is one of my favorite uh, K-pop groups. So it's pretty awesome to see those two in there. Now let's get to the guillotine file. This one really, really caught my interest. So the guillotine file had pretty much illegal stuff that people of higher ups done. You know, that's basically what it is. So the files were hidden. They were never lost, but apparently they got leaked. Kisok knew about it and told uh, Chayong, Vincenzo, and Ju Song about it. And the person who created the files was Wang Xiaolin, the Chinese boss that Vincenzo met a year before. And he was the one that told Vincenzo to hide the gold in, in the plaza. So it's the same guy. And what's also crazy is that in, in the file, it's also some stuff that the evil company has also done. And when I mean evil company, I meant Babel. I mean, there's no other evil company that has the most highlight in this drama anyway. But still, yeah. So Babel also has some dirty, dirty stuff in that file. So, so basically, if this file goes out into the public, that is it for not only Babel, but whoever's name is in that file. So yeah, this one has really caught my interest on this one. Now the last thing I want to talk about is when Hanso and Junu went hunting. So they went hunting for Junu to get his mind off of stuff. Then we see a little bit of a flashback 
of Sung Gyuk telling Han So, hey, if you have a chance, do it. This is your time to shoot the problem. And yeah, this is where it happens. Han So decided to shout at Junu that there was something to his right. While Han So was pretty much putting the bullets in the gun, lock and load, aiming at Junu, and he shot. He walked up to the body. Junu got up, walk, walked towards Han So and said, you should have aimed properly and fell down. And some random guy walked by and then Han So was pretty much playing victim. And then when they were at the hospital, Junu lives, obviously. But then go fast forward straight to Han So's meeting with other higher ups. And Junu comes in and pretty much reveals himself. So, yeah, his identity is already out. Now, what's next? So, in the end, Hanso didn't really get what he wanted. But I still didn't see the team up. Like we saw in the trailer and for, for this episode, from the last episode, you know what I mean? But I think it was just a future trailer on something that is going to happen. Probably in the next episode. where. Hanso and Vincenzo will team up. Um, yeah, things are going to get even more crazier now. Oh man, this episode was good. Like, it was just seriousness, a bunch of comedy in the middle with a little bit of seriousness in, in between, and then just ended it off with a lot of seriousness. And things are getting pretty much out of hand at this point. Man, that was good. Um, yeah, that was pretty much the gist of the episode. If there's anything else I might have missed, please leave it in the comments below. Man, ah, this drama is just so, so good. I mean, whew, what else is there to say that I, that I haven't already said before? You, you know what I mean? But anyway, if you guys like this review, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. See ya.